Because film is not only <clears throat> entertainment, it's also history. Because the history of our past, our period, our culture, our country, are fully wrapped in the films that we see of the past. And the only way we can learn for our future of what to do, what not to repeat, and what not to continue on, is to study and see and have the availability of these films, of which it is my honor and my, I feel, calling to have, have that purpose to do. So, now for 2020, which is, is, I am starting something totally new, which a genre, which I have really never focused on before with my audience, of which you are, I'm so grateful that you're here, is the fact that I'm going to be showing 1930s and even some silent 1920s mysteries. Ooh. Criminal mysteries. Ooh. Dashiell Hammett wrote the novel The Thin Man. Big success in 1934 when adapted to a film version for MGM. Now, Star of Midnight happens to be one of my favorite films. It is a New York, Manhattan, Broadway stage, Art Deco murder mystery, detective murder mystery. And also has a cast that is almost too closely representative of the year before, 1934's Thin Man, which had Myrna Loy, and William Powell as Nick and Nora Charles, the husband and wife team. Now this film has Ginger Rogers in that same type of a role as Myrna Loy would play. I personally think, my opinion is that I happen to like Ginger Rogers playing the role even better, but they're not married in this. Now William Powell, was famous for playing those detectives in that, in that era of class, sophistication, solving a murder in dinner clothes, you know? And getting all the criminals of the underworld into an upper class setting. You know, like you're rich millionaires, but you still are one with the lower element of life. And I, that contrast, I've always found to be very, very fun and interesting of the difference of the character characters. Now, uh, this film is so close to The Thin Man, it is almost remarkable and this frustrated the heck out of me. How could MGM, Louis B. Mayer, allow the next year for RKO, the lower budget studio, to copy, not only have the star of The Thin Man in it, but almost redo the whole film, not the plot, but the film, the type of film, at RKO, which in a way is stealing. It's not a sequel. It's another studio stealing the work. I had was very, ironically, I was contacted by uh, this author, a very prolific author whose book, Forbidden Hollywood, about the pre-code, pre-decency code films in Hollywood, I was in contact with, in fact, I sold him a copy of a DVD of what I found out from him is one of the only prints available of The Spider. The Spider I showed in other places I've done this screening program at. And uh, anyhow, I found, I found out from him, Mark Allen Vieira, that... Uh, this, that film is one of the rarest films, and this film seems that it was really a family in Hollywood at that time. And uh, Louis B. Mayer would get together with the other studio heads, so if they liked an idea, they were allowed to go with it. And go with it, they did. Yeah, so enjoy the movie. I want you to go back in time to 1935. You're gonna, this film, the combination of the characters and the New York element was wonderful. So enjoy this film. Thank you so much for being here. Now, February the 3rd, I expect to see you all because my mother will be here and she'll be counting heads. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, enjoy, folks. <coughs> 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 <coughs>
Hatomi? There's something on the bottom, Hatomi. Yeah, that's as loud as you can get, folks. 